all right so for today's video we got some more ghost recon wildlands and to be specific i'm going to be sharing with you all my top 10 best tips and tricks that i learned from the first week and i divided this top 10 into five pro tips and five basic or beginner tips and we're going to be starting off with the pro tips anyways my main goal with this video is to hopefully teach you a thing or two that you didn't already know and if you did learn anything from this video be sure to either leave a like, share, favorite, or comment. All right, so for this first tip, I wanted to show you all how you can steal enemy helicopters. Now I'm willing to bet most of you probably take out the helicopters by using your grenade launcher, which isn't a bad way to take them out. You can also take out enemy helicopters using the explosive drone. But for this tip, I wanted to show that you can also take out enemy helicopters with the EMP drone as well. Now technically, this does not destroy the helicopter. It just disables it for about a minute or so, and depending on where the helicopter lands, you may actually end up being able to steal that helicopter. Now I've done this quite a few times, and I haven't been able to steal the helicopter every time because sometimes the helicopter falls into some trees or into a building and the rotors end up getting messed up and it blows up. But if the enemy helicopter lands without crashing into anything, then you'll be able to steal it. And the EMP drone can not only disable helicopters, but it can also disable other vehicles as well, like boats and cars. Anyways, in order to steal the enemy helicopter, obviously you're going to have to have the EMP unlocked on your drone. And the more upgrades you have unlocked, the further the range of the EMP is. And another skill I would recommend for this tip is the speed skill for the drone. So it can easily catch up with the helicopters in case they start flying around really fast. I haven't seen anybody else use the EMP drones to steal enemy helicopters, so that's why I consider this to be a really good tip. All right, so as for my number two tip, I wanted to point out that you can one-shot vehicles and that not only includes land vehicles and boats, but it also includes helicopters. Now I haven't tested this out with every vehicle in the game, but it does seem like it can one shot most vehicles. And in order to one shot vehicles, um, you're gonna have to use the HTI sniper rifle, which can be found in the Maniac province. You're also gonna wanna make sure that you don't have a suppressor on your HTI, so it does the maximum amount of damage. And the last thing you'll need is to have your vehicle destruction skill upgraded. All right, so for my number three tip, I wanted to show you how you can still easily spy enemies with your drone, even if there's a jammer. All right, so as we all know, if there's a jammer nearby, it'll prevent you from being able to use your drone. So every time you pull out your drone, you'll notice that the screen's like staticky, and then after a couple of seconds, it makes you put your drone back up. But what I wanted to point out is that if you have the spotting rebel ops skill unlocked, you can use that skill with your drone before your drone automatically gets put away. So yeah, even if there's a jammer active, which prevents you from using your drone, you can still pull out your drone for a couple of seconds and use the spotting skill and point out all of the enemies in that area. All right, so the number four tip has to do with the network station side job, and that's the job where you have to destroy the doors and then break inside the building, kill the enemies inside and hack the computer before the time runs out. And the tip I wanted to share with you all is that you can use the spotting skill to spot all of the enemies inside. And I'm not sure why this tip works, but you can also mark those enemies for a sync shot and your AI teammates will be able to kill those enemies even though they're inside the building. Obviously, none of those enemies will be able to shoot back at you because they're stuck inside. So you can go ahead and sync shot all of the enemies inside the building and take them out before you destroy the door and break in and hack the computer. And as you can see here, I was able to hack the computer within like 10 seconds of blowing open the door. For the number five tip, I wanted to point out that the thermal vision mode is really useful when you're scouting an area with your drone. As you can see here, I've already highlighted all of the installments on this base, like the generator, the SAM launcher, as well as the lights. And if you look at the generator or the SAM launcher or the lights, you'll notice that they have a heat signature, which obviously makes them easier to spot when you're trying to scout an area. One thing I should point out with the lights though is that if you look at them from behind, you won't be able to notice them. But if you look at them from the front, they'll be easier to spot because again, they give off a heat signature. So whenever you're scouting an area, you might wanna use the thermal vision mode. All right, so that wraps up the five pro tips that I was gonna share with you all. 
and the next five tips I'm gonna go over are more or less basic or beginner tips. As for the sixth tip, this one has to do with automatic doors. And I'm basically gonna show you a couple different ways on how you can open them. One way you can open these doors is to either destroy or deactivate the generator that's powering the door. You can also use the EMP skill on your drone to open the door directly. But one thing I wanted to point out is that if you focus your drone on the door, you'll notice that it says it opens if approached in a vehicle of the appropriate faction. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and show you some vehicles you can use to open the door. First up, we're gonna take a look at some cartel vehicles. And as you see here, there's a truck, there's a Jeep, and there's also a Hummer. And they all have like a white or off-white color to them. And I'm not sure what the name of this vehicle is, but this is also another cartel vehicle that you can use to open those doors. And next up, we have the sports cars. Um, I'm driving an El Polito sports car, which is the yellow one. And there's also a white sports car that drives around randomly that you can use to open up the doors. Anyways, next up, we're gonna be taking a look at the Unidad vehicles. And first up, we have this heavily armored vehicle that can be used to open doors to Unidad locations. Another Unidad vehicle that you can use to open doors is this Jeep right here. And I know it's kind of hard to see because it's dark, but it has sort of like a digital camo paint job. And you'll see what I mean when I show this next group of Unidad vehicles. And as for those other Unidad vehicles, here they are. As you can see, there's a few trucks as well as a doom buggy. And if you look at that paint job, you'll see it's like a digital camo paint job. So those are the different cartel and Unidad vehicles that you can use to open up those automatic doors. I should also probably point out that there may be other cartel and Unidad vehicles that I didn't show here. These are just some of the ones that I came across when making this video. All right, so for the seventh tip, I wanted to point out how you can customize your character. For those who don't know, I uploaded a video a couple days ago explaining how you can get some items from the Ubisoft Club Store. And in that video, I had a couple comments of people asking how can they equip those items. Anyways, in order to customize your appearance, you're gonna have to press select and either go to the skills or loadout screen. And if you look towards the bottom left, you'll see the option that says edit appearance. And for those who are wondering how to equip the cigar that I mentioned in that previous video, you're gonna have to go to edit appearance, then go to accessories, go down to face wear, and you should see the option that says El Jefe Cigar. So that's how you change your character's appearance, and that's how you equip the El Jefe Cigar. As for the number eight tip, this one's a really easy tip, and I'm sure most of y'all probably already know about it, but I did wanna mention it for those who don't. And that tip is that you can switch between first and third person. And I'm not sure what it is on PC. If y'all know what it is, be sure to let us know in the comments. But on console, all you have to do is press down the right thumbstick or R3. And you'll notice when you're aiming down your weapon, it changes between first person and third person. All right, so for number nine and 10, technically they are three different tips each, but they're really quick and easy tips. So I kind of grouped them all together. Anyways, with the number nine tip, we're gonna start off showing you how to destroy the power boxes on the alarms. As you can see here, it has like a white glow to it and it's directly below the horns. And you can shoot these from like really far away. So what I would recommend doing is when you come up to an area where there's a lot of enemies and an alarm, just go ahead and shoot the alarm first before you do anything. That way it'll prevent any helicopter or vehicle reinforcements from showing up. So as soon as you reach an area, just shoot that little panel on the alarms. And technically you can also destroy it using an EMP drone, explosive drone, or destroying or deactivating the generator that powers it. And speaking of the generator, you can blow it up using explosives like the explosive drone, frag grenade C4. You can also deactivate it manually, or you can use an EMP to destroy it. But one thing I wanted to point out is that if you have the HTI sniper, and you take the suppressor off, you should be able to destroy the generator with one shot. But if you do decide to shoot it with the HTI sniper without the suppressor, you probably wanna shoot it from more than 150 meters. That way the enemies won't know who shot it. And the same thing is true with drone jammers. You can destroy that with explosives. You can also deactivate it manually, or you can destroy it by shooting it with regular weapons. But I wouldn't recommend using regular weapons on the jammer because it seemed like it took a lot of shots before it got destroyed. And as for the last tip, and again, we're gonna be going over three different things in this tip. I wanted to point out that whenever you're doing a mission at night, you should try to shoot all of the lights between you and your destination. 
because it makes it harder for the enemies to see you. So if you're playing a mission at night, be sure to shoot out the lights that are located along the path you plan to take. And the last thing I wanted to point out is that when it comes to mortars and miniguns, neither of these can be destroyed. So if you see anybody near the mortar or the minigun, you definitely want to try to take them out. Anyways, that's all the tips and tricks I'm going to share for now. Let me know if y'all want me to do another 10 tips and tricks for Ghost Recon Wildlands. Also, if you all have any tips, feel free to share them in the comments below. Anyways, that'll do it for this video. If y'all enjoyed it or found it useful, don't forget to do what you do. I'm A1. Thanks for watching.